part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birdwright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. It's Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the Man of Tomorrow. And what we got going on today is kind of a a mini-sode, I guess, is I wanted to review some things because I want to get more into reviewing the comics. And I've been kind of diving into different things. And one of the books that I've been digging into as I'm on my way through Infinite Crisis, which I don't know why it's taking me this long in my life to get through Infinite Crisis, um, and I'm going to do a whole episode with Brian on Infinite Crisis and on Superboy Prime, hopefully in the near future, or I might just end up doing an Infinite Crisis episode. I don't know, but we're going to talk about it. And this episode is kind of a, I don't know, it's weird because I want to do this one because I just read this first because it was recommended me something to check out based on another conversation that I had. And that is the Superman um, Up, Up, and Away run. And I never read this, and I always saw it, and people talked about it. And then I heard, oh, it's so good. You got to check it out. Um, Brian, James, and I have all been reading a lot, having Ultra. And it is worth it, just, just saying that to everybody. So when Brian said that, I was like, okay. I will check this out, and I will read this. And Brian loved it. He was so into it, so excited. And we're going to go over my thoughts about it, okay? So without further ado, we're going to get into Superman Up, Up, and Away on this Krypton Report Minisode comic review. Now, Superman Up, Up, and Away slash one year later. It's very important here. Let me take a quick drink of my non-sponsored Zoa. Ah, Zoa, best energy drink, official energy drink of Dwayne Johnson, Mr. Black Adam. <clears throat> but hey, one year later, first of all, let's get into that, is a 2006 comic book storyline running through books published by DC Comics. It involves a narrative jump exactly one year into the future of the DC Universe following the events of Infinite Crisis. It explores changes within the continuity of many different comic books within the DC Comic Library. Following the events of Infinite Crisis storyline, where every DC comic series jumped ahead in the story by one year, the events of the missing year were depicted in real time in the weekly comic book series 52. The one year later storyline started in March of 2006, starting the same week that Infinite Crisis number 5 went to press. That and before the first issue of 52. Which is kind of confusing that you don't even finish one storyline before the next one kind of jumps. Most first issues bearing the one-year logo were first parts of multiple issue storylines and feature major changes to the status quo of each character, often intentionally left unexplained as these details would be filled in by the remaining issues of Infinite Crisis and 52. Numerous prominent heroes were missing or inactive for most of the year as the one year later issue commenced. Heroes known to have been gone or missing were Aquaman, Batman, Blue Beetle, Green Arrow, Hawkman, Martian Manhunter, Nightwing, Robin, Superman, and Wonder Woman. The Flash went missing, but Jay Garrick had been protecting Keystone City in the absence. The year-long absences were the three most prominent superheroes of the DC Comics universe, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, and their return to active duty were all significant parts of the one year later series in the 52 series. It was originally published. Now, now we're getting into Superman uh, up, up, and away. It was originally published in Action Comics 837 through 840 and Superman 650 and 653. And that's May through August of 2006. And this was the first Superman story the one year later and after the event of Infinite Crisis. Now, the first thing I want to point out is I... <laughs> I get from a publishing where I you would print the story between two titles because now you're getting out two issues a month, so it's not taking as long to tell the story. 
But it, it does stink that, you know, I started this on the app. I couldn't read the storyline up, up, and away. I had to jump between Superman, action. Superman, action, back and forth. I didn't realize that. I, I You know, I like re- being able to read a story straight through and not have to jump between multiple titles. But the story is like this. And I'll, I'll kind of give a summary of what happened and my thoughts at the same time. Reading the story, I was excited, it being having Jeff Johns' name on it. Now, this is before Jeff Johns became Jeff Johns, you know, and he was really starting to cut his teeth, but he's not the predominant writer of the series. I was caught off guard by how lighthearted it felt that Superman was okay with not having his powers. Now, in this, we find out Superman is just reporting, and he was just wanted to be a reporter Clark Kent. His dress and action show a Almost a re, not a re, um, well, what's the word? Regression to childhood because he wears his high school jacket, his Smallville sports jacket. He's acting more like a kid who just started college and feels more like a Jimmy Olsen almost at, at times than a seasoned adult reporter who is trying to cover some of the hardest news in Metropolis. But we, you know, we, he seems so happy with, I don't have my powers. I don't have this. I'm not Superman. I'm just Clark Kent. And we see that Clark is doing well with this. He's doing great at the planet. He's do, succeeding at his job. And him and Lois are having a better marriage. This does show that Lois loves Clark, not Superman. Because they talk about throughout this arc of how great things have been, how their marriage has been. And it's very, you know, prominent that they are happy with their marriage and that the time they have spent together. Um, we do get the creation of the Kryptonite Man, and we see that Clark uses his sig- a signal watch to call for Supergirl to show up and help. So Clark kind of is, like I said, like a Jimmy Olsen almost, where he's calling Supergirl when he needs help. And as the story unfolds, Clark relies a lot on his fellow superheroes. We have Green Lantern, Supergirl, and Hot Girl that are all kind of working together. And the first point here is it shows how much Superman is needed and how much Clark relied on it because he does a lot of things where he's getting involved and he quickly has to call for Supergirl. So to me, that shows that, you know what, man? Something's up if you have to constantly be relying on calling for Supergirl. But we digress for now. Um, the other thing is, as we go forward, we'll see more of how Hawkman and, uh, what do you call it, Hawkman and um, Green Lantern come into play and how much more they are needed. Now, Lex is is distressed and starts an underground work. He is working with a creepy, weird version of Toy Man. Toy Man makes a Superman robot suit. They are outfitting inner gang with Lexo suit armor. Lex also works with a cloned bodied Metallo, John Corbin. And Lex, we see, is collecting all the kryptonite, and he takes the kryptonite heart from Metallo. As the story progresses, Hal Jordan ends up giving Clark a Green Lantern rings to use if needed. The ring actually helps blur the imagery so that you don't see that it's actually Clark when he's using it. See, now that just goes to show you how much Clark, okay, needs. Clark having the Green Lantern ring just proves that he needs his powers, and Clark has become reliant on having superpowers, and he's been relying on superpower people to do his job. It's The story really is a mental thing for Clark Kent, but I feel like we never really get to explore the depth of that. Um, I really feel like there's more going on here, and I'll get into that. In the third chapter of the series, Clark stops a train. And then the next issue which is the big turning point, he talks about his powers returning. Him and Lois have a discussion about his powers returning and life changing and going back to the way it was before. 
And Lois is shown here to be very positive, lighthearted, and encouraging, and tells Superman basically up, up, and away, and go get him. And he puts on his costume, he goes back. He talks about not having his powers at full strength, not being like he was, but he talks about that maybe subconsciously he didn't want his powers back. Of course, this always reminds me of, you know, Spider-Man with the whole Spider-Man No More, much like in Spider-Man 2, and all that, where the hero doesn't want to be the hero anymore, and he wants to be normal. And that's their big explanation of why Superman's powers didn't return. We have a scene that shows him with, in the Star Labs, you know, um, laboratory with Mr. Terrific and different intelligent characters trying to figure out what happened to his powers. And the idea is it's just subconscious. And I feel like that's, that is the story right there where we could have reduced some of this stuff down and talk more about his state of mind and how he views the world and what he's dealing with. Because let's take a moment and look at the fact that if all of a sudden his body changed and he no longer processed solar energy and had all that, slowly Superman would start to age. His muscles and everything should hurt. They should feel weak because he's technically never had to really use them before the way that we would use our muscles. Um, his metabolism would slow down, he would gain weight, and it would be very hard on him at first because it would be like a newborn baby experiencing everything for the first time because his body would be completely changed. Now, this is coming after a crisis event, so maybe his body was adapted, I don't know, but there would be a significant level of change back because even when he goes off here and... um. What do you call it? He he returns to being Superman and he fights the puzzle. He talks about his not being at full power and having to watch and recalibrate for how he behaves and how he acts and what he does. And that's part of what I'm saying here is I, I just feel like there's more in this story to mine. Now, as the story progresses, we learned that Lex had found that there was a Kryptonian warship that had already years ago landed on Earth and been inactive and was under the ground. And he raises it. And part of why he went all the kryptonite was for this. Um, And I felt like this fell into the usual trap of a lot of Superman stories, kind of like Birthright, which I love Birthright, where you have this great personal story, and then by the third act, end of it, it's just this huge alien invasion-type battle story where here we have a group of mercs that are going after Superman that are being paid and it's live wire, blood sport, silver Banshee and some others. And, you know, Lex is in this Kryptonian battleship. And, you know, I go back and forth about how much Krypton was involved with earth before Superman came and why Krypton is always painted as basically being this evil race. And um, in one breath, I think that'd be a very interesting story if Krypton had almost become void of emotion, very Vulcan, and sterile, and really wasn't this great culture of people. They were more of a people that lost their way, and that Cal really was the last of these people, but yet his personality is so much different that he represents something new from Krypton, not like what Krypton was. But, you know, and then the final issue feels more like an epilogue story. And the story was, is all about, like, kind of like Superman's, hey, he's back. He's wrapping up things. You know, Clark's back to not being as efficient at the Daily Planet. They have to kind of start to lie to Perry again. But, oh, Clark's sick, or Clark's doing this, and really reestablish the status quo. And all in all, the story was good, but it really wasn't great. The tone fell off at times for me, and I felt the themes presented were handled very lightly instead of digging more into the personal struggle of Clark. Once back on the Daily Planet, Clark um, is back on the swing that we know, and it just did not feel like the run I had expected coming after such a strong run with Infinite Crisis. But that is Superman Up, Up, and Away from the one year later. What are your thoughts? Leave comments, send questions, Twitter, email, anything you can. Let us know, and we can discuss this comic. Look forward to more chats and reviews of other comic storylines in the near future. And remember...
in the sky. Yes, it's me, Sayla. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find find all of our information right there. One dollar a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show. Like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out. Patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month, and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book, and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in.